Mr. Myers. I'm here back in my garage for another tech kit tutorial. Okay, stagecraft kit tutorial. Today, we're painting. How awesome. All right, so you are going to need some supplies for today's stuff. I've got mine laid out right here. I want you to grab yours. This is what you're going to need. So let's get into it. You're gonna need a cardboard box, your paint kit from the Stagecraft paint kit that's got the five tubes of paint, black, white, red, blue, and yellow. You're gonna need both your one and a half inch brushes, both your half inch brushes, water to rinse, a ruler, a pen or a pencil, scissors, and tape of some kind, either painter's tape if you've got it, the blue tape, or regular masking tape works. Clear tape will work in a pinch, but it's not optimal. You might also need paper towels to clean up because this paint will stain if it gets on things, and a paper plate to mix some paint later. Now that you've got all of that stuff, um, what I want you to do, uh, first things first, is we got to do a little bit of setup. So I am going to get my stuff set up here underneath my camera for this paint. Follow along. So first things first, we got to prepare our cardboard. So I'm going to cut open my cardboard box and flip it inside out. All I really need is one of the inside panels because I'm gonna make two boxes or rectangles in here that are six inches tall by four inches wide. Leave a little gap in between the boxes. You don't want them right next to each other because you don't want the paint blending into the boxes. So you're gonna create two rectangles that are four inches wide by six inches tall. Once you've got them drawn out, grab your tape, again, masking or blue tape or clear tape if you need it, and tape a line around the outside edges of the boxes. All right, now that I've got my two boxes taped off here, um, your boxes need to be, again, right? Like your boxes need to be four inches by six inches. Um, you want two of them. It's okay if you need two pieces of cardboard to do this. Um, as long as the box is four inches by six inches, the reason you want it like this size is you want the box to be big enough that you have room to practice this technique in. If it's too small, it, right, it won't be very effective. Um, so two boxes that are four inches by six inches, you can pencil them out. The tape is optional. Obviously not everybody has, wow, <laughs> obviously not everybody has blue tape at their house. Um, regular masking tape would work. Clear tape would work. It's just gonna be really hard to peel up afterwards. So I think if you had clear tape, you could skip that step. Um, what this is gonna do, the tape is gonna do, is give us a really clean edge when we're done. So, um, and I like that, I prefer that. After you get these two boxes taped out, you need to put down a layer of white paint. Okay, this is where you're gonna wanna shake this paint up because it is acrylic and even though it's acrylic and not water-based, it might have done a little bit of separating. Um, later on when we get into uh, what our actual paint task is for this, uh, after this base coat, um, you're gonna want like a little paper plate or something or another piece of cardboard to put paint on to mix on. But for now, we're just gonna put this paint directly on here and get a great first coat down, okay? Because you gotta have a first layer coat. For this, we're going to use the white paint. We're going to use the one and a half inch brush. And this, we're just looking for a nice even base coat underneath to paint on top of later. So give yourself a couple of squirts. Cover it up. While I'm doing this, it's a great time to remind you that these techniques take practice. It might be good to practice on a spare piece of cardboard before you dive into your final product that you're going to submit with a picture to me. Okay, I've done these techniques tons of time. You watch this video multiple times so that you can get this down before you're ready to go for your final coat, please. All right. Now that we've got our white on there, another reason again to have the tape down is that 
I don't have to worry about the edges, okay? If you don't have tape down, make sure you've got like cleaner edges on there than I did. The tape just allows me the freedom to kind of like schmutz this stuff all over the place. Um, tape is really your best friend when stage, when painting for the stage because it allows you to be a little bit messier. I'm gonna let this bit dry for a bit. Don't forget to wash your brush. Okay, wash your brush. So that's what the water is for. I'm gonna take it, I'm just gonna swirl it out. I've got uh, uh, two cups for water. I've got one that's a larger bowl that's gonna allow me to really like get some of that paint out. And then I've got a cup for a second rinse once I feel like this paint is a little bit cleaner. You can also do this in a sink. Um, in fact, I'm gonna take my brush and go do that in the sink right now. So um, clean your brush out, come back in about a half an hour to, to this. So if you're watching this for the first time, I'm gonna fast forward and come back and show you the techniques after I'm done, all right? Um, all right, here we are, we're back again. Um, this next step is something I didn't talk about in the introduction, okay? Um, we're gonna need, we're gonna do a little bit of paint mixing. <clears throat> so two ways that you could do this. You could take the other side of the box, like I've got here. For paint mixing, you don't wanna do it on this brown side of the cardboard because this is gonna actually absorb a little bit of the paint. Um, you wanna do it on the side that's painted, right? So that it, the paint is gonna sit on top of it. You could do it on the, <clears throat> like a side of this cereal box. Or if you've got any of these sitting around your house, like a little paper plate, this is the perfect thing, okay? Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple of different techniques on these two boxes. And you're gonna need a little bit of a paint mixture to do so. So first things first, I want you to choose one of the primary colors that you've got here. We've got red, blue, and yellow as primary. They're as close to primary as you can get, kind of. Um, choose one of these for one box and one of these for the other box. So you want to choose two. I'm gonna go with red and blue today. I'm gonna leave yellow off to the side. Don't like you, yellow. Um, shake these up a little bit. We're gonna start with the left-hand box. I'm gonna use blue on that, but I'm also gonna need a little bit of white to do some of the mixing. So I'm gonna move this off to the side while I do this so you can see what I'm gonna do here. Um, shake both of them up. The first technique that we're gonna do is called scumbling. And scumbling is like, it's blending two colors together in a random pattern so that they, um, so that they create like a textured background. This is a, it's a technique used um, to create texture on lots of different surfaces. So I'm going to need regular blue, and then I'm gonna need a second little bit of blue over here that I'm going to mix with some white. Okay, I want this to be about half or about the same size as this over here, but the majority of it is gonna be white. Um, the blue and the red and the yellow have a lot of pigment in them, so I'm gonna need more white than the blue to really um, change the color. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my brush. Now I'm gonna remember which brush this is, too, because after I blend this, it's created a nice little lighter shade of blue here. You could also take like a little stick to do this or the back of the brush. Some people use the back of the brush, but for today, we're just gonna blend it really nicely together on our fake little palette here. If you've got like a regular paint palette, you could also use that too. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna leave this brush here because I'm gonna use this brush on this light blue. And then I'm gonna use my other half inch brush on this dark blue. And now this is where we get into the scumble. All right, I'm gonna grab my two white boxes. For this technique, we're gonna paint the left hand box only. 
I'm not going to change. I'm going to use one brush for one color and the other brush for the other color because this technique requires speed. So I'm going to put down a little bit of this light blue and a little bit of this other blue and I'm just going to blend them across in random patterns as I go. If you have two totally different like, you know, colors, you just drop it and then blend it out. But this one we're going to do like this. Okay, so here we go. Have fun. So to do this, I start with the light blue and I kind of just dab little bits all over the place, getting some paint in there. And then I switch brushes to the clean brush and use the dark blue in the gaps. After I've got a little bit out there, I start to swirl it around in random directions using omnidirectional brush strokes. So it's all over the place. I'm not trying to make any kind of pattern really just randomize. Once I get all my paint kind of splattered and I'm starting to smear it around, I'm just switching back and forth between brushes, making sure to use the dark blue brush with the dark blue and the light blue brush with the light blue. I'm trying to get it all the way to the edge of the tape so that there's no white showing. And I'm just adding a little bit more dark blue where I got it, a little bit more light blue where I want it. It's real random and fun. Ta-da. All right, that is scumbling, okay? Taking two colors. Notice I didn't mix my brushes up when I was taking paint off the palette. Um, I gave myself way too much blue, dark blue here. I feel like that's a little bit of a waste. Um, so I'm gonna try to get that back into the brush with like a screwdriver or, some, or back into the bottle with some screwdriver. If you got extra like primary colored paint, try to get it back in your bottle if you can. I'm not gonna make you watch me do that though. But that's scumbling, right? So you saw how I just made like little concentric circles all the way around and I was blending between the two to make sure that I've got a little bit of like a little bit of both. When this dries, I'll take the tape off and show you what it looks like dry. This is kind of a neat technique though because it creates texture to overlay. So let me rinse my brushes off, get my paint back into the bucket. I'll come back with the next piece. So got my blue back in. If you're looking, if you got too much paint, okay, I used like a little putty knife. If you got one of these, this is really good. I just kind of like scooped it up and then scraped it off on the edge. It's all right if you run out. If you end up running out of a color, I have lots of extras that you can ask for. You just got to email me and I get you some more paint. Um, when you rinse off your brushes, okay, when you rinse off your brushes, they're going to end up with a little bit of residue. I just set them out to dry. These aren't the best quality brushes. They're really kind of low quality brushes. If they end up breaking down on you, email me. I've got more of them. I can get them to you. All right. For this though, we're not going to use these half inch brushes. We're going to go back to our one and a half inch brushes for the right hand side. Cause on the right hand side, we're going to do a technique called gradient base coating. Okay. Both of these are, are techniques that you would use underneath of detail. So you would paint this out, let it dry, and then you would add detail on top of it. This is called base coating for a reason because I'm gonna add some more over it. So actually what we're gonna do with this is once this is dry, we're gonna add to it later in the next video, okay? So one side is scumbled, two color scumbled. You can scumble with three or four colors too if you want, and if the, especially if they're like, different hues of the same color. That works really well. On this right hand side, we're going to create a gradient. And for this, I want you to choose a different primary color. I'm going to start with red. And then we're going to use black. Black acrylic paint goes a long way. So you're not going to need a lot of this. And I'm not going to even use a um, I'm not gonna use a little palette for this one because I'm actually gonna blend these. This is another form of what's called wet blending where I'm blending the paints together while they're wet before they dry. Um, but this is another form of wet blending that can be done and I'm gonna blend it right on my canvas. So for this part, for me, it's a little bit easier. I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna turn my canvas sideways for this gradient Again, like the scumble, I'm going to use one brush for one color and the other brush for the other color. Shake these paints up.
And like I said, a little bit of black goes a long way. I'm gonna start with like three dots over here on this side of black. And I'm gonna start with some red over here. And eventually I'm gonna blend these together to meet in the middle. So I'm gonna take my red and I'm gonna paint It really is red. So I take the red and I take the black and I'm switching between brushes. I add more red as I get it across up over halfway and then I take the black over, add more red on top. I made a huge mistake though and I grabbed a little bit of black with my red brush so I had to keep adding red on top of the red to get that color back. I actually ended up having to rinse out my brush several times to get the red consistency right. In the end though, it works out. I just add a little bit more red over the top and I'm blending from the red to the black, continually rinsing my brush off if I need. All right, so I got my little gradient done. It's kind of hard to see in the glaring light, but if I hold it up like this, you can see that I've got a real stark red on one side and a black on the other side. Now I made a mistake and you might've caught it halfway through. I, um, and, <laughs> I pointed it out obviously, but like I took my red brush into the black and then I went right back to the red. That was a mistake. I needed to wipe the black off of my brush before I went back into the red. So what I did to correct that, and it's all right if you do that, is I just took more red and I put it on there. So this canvas now has a lot of red on it and a lot of black. Um, but you can see the gradient goes from red to black. So if you choose black, just be careful, okay? If you choose black, just be careful. I'm gonna go rinse my brushes out fully, take this water that looks like, uh, I don't know, like terrible yogurt and get rid of it. And I'll be right back to finish this video up, all right? All right, so here we are, we're back. Um, I've got my two, uh, two patterns. I'm going to leave the tape on. Don't take the tape off. I'm going to let this dry somewhere that nothing's going to touch it. If you've got younger siblings, animals, you don't want them to accidentally step on this and then step on the carpet or anything like that. So put this somewhere where it can dry. If you can get it into the sun to help it dry, that's great. But uh, we're going to come back to this later with a couple of different techniques to add on top of it because this is our base coat. What we've got here on the left is a uh, two color scumble. It's really kind of like a three color scumble because there was a little bit of white in there too. And then on the right, we've got a two color gradient in here, just blended together. This is what these two techniques both involve wet blending and wet blending is when you take two paints that are not dry and you blend them together. A quick note before we go, about brushes and brush care. I rinse my brushes out under warm water. I make sure that my sink is exceptionally clean afterwards because acrylic paint, which is what we've got here, is water washable. Um, however, the dye that's in this paint, especially the red and the black, will stain. So I don't let that sit in anywhere, okay? I've got my cups here, they're clean of everything. This bowl is kind of a dirty bowl anyway, so I wasn't as clean with this one and I use it for crafting. But if you're using uh, anything from your house, you wanna make sure that all of that acrylic paint is off of there because it will accidentally stain. Like you can see, it's gonna stain this brush handle, but I don't really care about the brush handle. One good technique that you could do with these brushes after you've rinsed them off, you wanna rinse them under the water until the water runs clean. And then, take it outside. I'm in a garage so I can do this and there's no carpet on the ground. You want to like flick down and stop real like hard and it gets a little bit of the extra water out of these so they kind of fray out. That's all right. They're cheap brushes. And then I'm going to set them somewhere so that they can air dry so that air can get all around them. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set them on top of my bowl here and they will air dry for a day. And I'll come back and be able to use them later. All right, so I got my brushes laid out. I got my canvas 
two different colors of paint. The technique is challenging. Give yourself some grace, give yourself some practice. You might practice small, but this is what you need to be done with this project. One side that is two color scumbled and one side that is two color gradient. Best of luck. See you next time.